Hey guys, I am Dr. Shireen Idris and welcome to my YouTube channel on this beautiful Saturday morning. Um, today we are going to be reacting to Gwyneth Paltrow's Vogue video, the infamous Vogue video that came out earlier this week where every single dermatologist died a little bit when they saw the video. Um, <laughs> I am here to hopefully shed some light as to what she is doing and why it is wrong and why Hopefully it does this certain myths that are, you know, propelled throughout the video get squashed. I also want to say I don't believe in bashing any human being. I don't believe in canceling any human being. I believe in trying to show people if they, you think they're doing something wrong, why they're doing something wrong, explaining your thought process, and hopefully having a very healthy discussion around it in order to evolve and grow together because that is life. OK, if you cannot make mistakes and you cannot learn from your mistakes, then you're going nowhere, honestly. Um, and no one is a Yoda. OK, no one. Um, so I feel the need to preface this video with that just because je ne sais pas. I just do. Also, I forgot to mention because I was so sucked into this video uh, on Vogue. We hit 100,000. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And next Saturday, we will have a special Saturday edition of what we do, Pillow Talk Derm, where we will announce the rules of the giveaway, what I'm going to be giving away. I swear to guys, I swear to God, guys, it is going to be worth your while. I don't know how to budget anything. And right now, the box is like valued at least at $1,000. I kid you not. Um, I've put it all together. It's over there. And um, I'm going to kind of make sure that it is very nice and consistent and pretty and well put together for all of you. So tune in next Saturday. On that note, here it goes. Hi, I'm Gwyneth Paltrow and I'm back for my second Beauty Secrets. I'm going to walk you through a little bit of my daily routine and all of the products that I love and you can see how it has evolved. The first thing that I do in the morning, well after I brush my teeth, is make my morning smoothie. This one has some nut milk. I just want to say I have never seen anybody wake up with such a full face of makeup um, for it to be a morning routine. But maybe, I mean, just for the sake of the video, she's filming it with makeup on. Fine. Fine, but that should be indication of what's to come. Yeah. And some almond butter, some good quality protein powder, just a little something to always make sure I have a, a little protein before my morning workout. The first part of my beauty routine, which is really part of my wellness routine, I believe that beauty and wellness are inextricably linked, is the dry brush. That's probably having already watched this video because this is not the first time I'm watching it. The only real thing I fully agree with. <laughs> Beauty and wellness are definitely linked. When you feel good, you look good. When you look good, you feel good. There is definitely a mind-body connection there. Um, so I will give Gwyneth a plus one on that. You just want to have a dry brush that has a little bit of um, resistance to it that's not too soft. And basically what you do is you start at your toes and you gently brush your skin all the way up the body. So, and always towards the heart. So I'm doing it on my arms now. And you- I have no problem with dry brushing. You know, if it tickles your fancy and floats your boat, why not do it? I just say, if you have active acne on your chest or back, be a little bit careful because you can probably be spreading um, bacteria throughout your chest or back. If you also have a fungal infection, I probably would not be dry brushing. Um, if you have psoriasis, you can actually spread lesions through a phenomenon known as Kebnerizing or Kebner's phenomenon. Um, so just be a little bit aware that, you know, um, dry brushing, although can be quite, you know, relaxing or nice or whatnot, might not necessarily be for everyone. It can appear very benign, but it can have some longer term effects if you have underlying conditions. It's super important to me. I can't live without it. It is our Goop Glow Microderm Instant Glow Exfoliator. I'm a massive exfoliating junkie. It just gives you this incredible smooth finish. Looks like that. Pause. Okay. So, um, this is a 
microdermabrasion physical exfoliator that is married to a chemical exfoliator, which is glycolic acid. Um, it is $125 to each their own. You know, if you're happy spending that money, may the force be with you. I will say, however, I'm not a fan of physical exfoliators. This one marries quartz, silica, alumina, and another one I can't remember. Um, I have definitely seen people develop irritations from, you know, the microderm because people oftentimes do not know how to use them and they believe that more is more and they just become more aggressive with it. That's number one. So I have actually seen scarring develop in the long run in certain patients from, you know, uh, at-home microdermabrasion kits. Number two, this one has glycolic acid um, in it, which is a chemical exfoliant. She is using this as the first step of her morning routine on what appears to be dry skin. That glycolic acid makes you sun sensitive, all right? It's not an acid that you take lightly. It's not an acid that you just decide to use a sunscreen afterwards as a highlighter, which we will get to in a minute. It is an acid in which you really need to protect your skin because the proof is in the pudding, sun damage can ensure. So that is that. And number three, I personally do not exfoliate in the morning. I exfoliate at night after taking off my makeup in order to prep my skin for the nighttime routine and before I go to bed. And the morning is really about, you know, making sure you're giving your skin the right sort of nutrients to fight your day, um, to really be on defense mode throughout the day. Let's go. Okie dokie. So now, she didn't wash her face also. I don't know how she got it off her face because she didn't wash her face. Her makeup has not moved. I am going to apply Vintner's Daughter. This is an unbelievable serum. I love the way it smells. Sorry. So Vintner's Daughter is $185. Again, I don't care about the pricing, okay? I really don't care to each their own. What bothers me about this particular product is that it is not a serum. It is a face oil. If you guys look at the ingredients of this product, the first ingredient is an oil. An oil is not a serum. A serum is usually water-based in order to deliver actives deeper into your skin. Oils are usually more as occlusives, things that you use either as a final step or before a final step as a moisturizer, depending on the type of oil that you're using. I would not be using this after exfoliating because you've just stripped your skin and then sealed. What? You haven't given your skin any of the nutrients that it needs to, to repair itself, basically, and you've just applied an occlusive layer of oil. So that's why this, to me, just shows me that, you know, I don't think she's fully well-versed in um, skincare. It's incredible to know. To her defense, though, they do market it as a serum. I don't know. To know that there are clean, non-toxic products that are really efficacious and really work wonders on your skin. Next, so this, I don't do this. Okay, clean, non-toxic products. What does that mean? I challenge anyone out there to find me a consistent, uniform definition of what clean, non-toxic means. You will not find it because it varies from retailer to retailer, from brand to brand. If brand X sells at retailer A, okay, retailer A has their own definition, so brand X has to mold what they think of clean into the definition of retailer A. So everybody is playing this wavy game of deciding this is a clean product, that's not a clean product, this is a non-toxic, this is a toxic. And this definition of clean and non-toxic is constantly evolving into a abyss of nothingness because it doesn't mean anything. Anything you buy over the counter in the US is going to be non-toxic. I hate fear mongering. I hate it. I hate it with a passion. I hate it because if you tell me that I shouldn't do something because I should be scared, I will do it because unless you explain to me the exact science or reasoning as to why 
I shouldn't be doing it and show me the data, show me the science. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. Okay, let's keep going. Every day, this is like special occasion. Say you're doing a photo shoot or you have a really important Zoom or maybe you had a bit of a rough night. So these, um, Jillian Dempsey, she's a fantastic makeup artist and she has these hydrating eye pads. You open up this nifty little package. Which is so she's using these eye patches. I like these eye patches because they're biocellulose path masks, okay? They're not sheet masks, so at least they're delivering some level of hydration, holding onto water. But does it make sense to use these patches after applying an oil on your face? Not really, because it's just swishing on top of the oil that you've just applied on top of your face as an occlusive. So she's basically wasting 75 bucks. Um, I will also say that I will give her a second plus one, um, maybe the last one of this video, in that she tries to apply the eye patches in what she thinks comes after a serum. I'm not strong enough to open. Okay, I got it. Sometimes I walk around the house with these on. My kids make fun of me. What else is new? While I'm letting them kind of soak in and doing email or whatever, I get the Jillian Dempsey also from her, this um, sculpting gold. Okay. This is a glorified version of a jade roller. <laughs> Um, I effing hate jade rollers. The only value of a jade roller or this bar is that it offers some sort of lymphatic massage and drainage. But honestly, there should just be a product that combines, you know, a jade roller with some kind of highly effective active. Because just to roll your face, you can use a spoon. You can use a spoon. You can put a spoon in the fridge and use your spoon. I have been saying this since I started on social media in 2018, you can use a spoon. Use a spoon. You know, if I want something that's a clean, non-toxic product that really works, that I want to buy at the drugstore, what should I get? And I always say, Willeta Skin Food. I wouldn't really classify the rich cream as a moisturizer despite its name again you guys have to be a little read between the lines this is a marriage between an emollient and an occlusive because it has um, wax esters in it plus it has oils in it so it's not something that i would use before anything like a light lotion which might be coming up it is something that i used to use and that i still use on the high points of my face when I'm really dry or definitely on my lips and a technique that I've liked to call lip basting to really lock in trans epidermal water loss to make sure that you're holding on to water. You know, it's not delivering water, it's helping you hold on to water. So, so um, use this after a moisturizer if you are really dry. If you're prone to sensitivities, it's not a um, number one choice because it does have essential oils in it, which can be irritating. So just approach with caution. Next is sunscreen. This is a clean mineral sunscreen brand called On Sun, and it's a 30 SPF. You know, there are a lot of really harsh chemicals in conventional sunscreen. So that's a product that I really want to avoid. Um, that, you know, isn't certified by the EWG. And which is a great website, by the way, if you ever want to understand how clean a, a, a product is, you can- The approach. music just did a like a record sort of. Okay, the Unsound Mineral Sunscreen, great brand, fine. It's a nice brand. It's a brand that promotes itself about what it doesn't have in it which I just by nature have an issue with whenever anybody says free up. It's like great. You know, it's like saying this coffee is free up orange juice. I wasn't going to put orange juice in my coffee. Um, so I, I just have a hard time buying into brands that do that. But it is a legit sunscreen. It's a mineral sunscreen. I have no problem with it. Boom. Then she mentions a three letter group. And the music died. <laughs> um, 
I will just say this. The only time, and I am waiting to see the comment section of this video, I have been attacked on social media was when I brought up this three-letter group. Attacked in a way I had never been attacked before. Interesting. I don't understand. I don't understand the basis of the fear-mongering. I don't understand how deep the pockets are tied within the beauty industry. I don't understand, and I'm just a lay person, um, but yeah, uh, it's maybe not, you know, I don't want to be a little you know, troll fighting a Goliath um, over here. But a lot of what is, you know, um, a lot of what she is referring to, the scientific community has a lot of issues with because it is not backed by hard science and data and facts. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of myths have been perpetuated and adopted by retailers who are then imposing these changes on the people creating the products who are then transforming their own ethos into what they consider to be clean and non-toxic. It's a vicious cycle and I am just a layperson. I do not want to get threats, but yes, I'm just going to keep it at that. Check that out on their website, Skin Deep. Um, and I, I'm not, you know, I'm not a sort of head to toe slather of sunscreen, but I like to put some kind of on my nose and the area where the sun really hits. This is where I died. This is where I actually physically melted, had to resuscitate myself in the morning because I saw this early in the morning and had to bring myself back to life. She claims she is not a head to toe sunscreen wearer. Goop just came out with a statement because they felt the need that they had to explain this to everybody, saying that she had actually applied the sunscreen all over her entire face and it was edited for timing's sake in order to not show the full application. But her comment specifically says she doesn't slather it head to toe. But they tried to turn that around by saying she at least addresses the importance of sun protection and mineral sunscreen. What about chemical sunscreen? Chemical sunscreen is as important as mineral sunscreen. They further say mineral sunscreens which deflect the rays off of your skin rather than absorbing them as chemical sunscreens do. Chemical sunscreens and mineral sunscreens actually work the same way. This has come to light in the past couple of years. You know, the scientific community, the dermatology community has now starting to realize it and starting to put this information forward. We used to think that it was sort of a black and white deflects the rays and versus absorbs them, but no physical ones actually do absorb them. Um, so number, I don't even know what, she put the tiniest dab of sunscreen. I'm gonna put in this video a little clip from an Instagram story I did showing how much sunscreen you need. You need a third to half a teaspoon of sunscreen for adequate coverage to cover your face, neck, and ears. And then you'll always have a little bit extra you can put on the back of your hands, you can put on the back of your neck if you have a very short haircut or if your neck is constantly exposed. Um, but I will show you guys a quick clip here. For your, it's a terrible angle. For your face and neck, all right? Boom, bada boom, boom. How much is this? Probably that much okay all right so again i'm not here to bash anybody i'm not here to point out anybody's um faults physical faults but this is not a physical fault what she has going on this is a consequence of a certain behavior and the proof is in the pudding when you look at this person's skin when you look at their age, when you look at the quality of the skin, when you look at the damage present in the skin, the proof is in the pudding that this is not an avid sunscreen wearer. I'm really restraining myself for this video because I want this video to be as educational as possible and not just a slapstick, let me just get something out there for reactions. It's not at all what I'm trying to achieve through this video. No lotion. Um, so this is like a light moisturizer that you can put on. It just gives your skin an amazing little pick-me-up, just a nice... She used the oil, then she used the Walita, then she used the sunscreen, then she put the lotion. It's like, sunscreen should be your last step. No matter what you do, sunscreen should be your last step, okay? Glow. I, I really wanted to start making beauty products because at the time there really wasn't a lot available that was kind of beautiful, high quality, non-toxic products. And um, there were sort of clean moisturizers that you could find at the health food store. 
Um, and then there were all of your conventional ones and that some of them, even the really expensive ones had crazy ingredients in them like antifreeze, literally. Uh, so we're gonna stop her and we're not even gonna continue. We're going to stop her and not continue. That is a comment from somebody who has not educated themselves, okay? Antifreeze is ethylene glycol. Propylene glycol is not the same thing as that toxic level of antifreeze that you actually use in a vehicle. Propylene glycol is actually used as a humectant, as a moisturizer. It is actually used as a solvent because it helps to dissolve things that are not water soluble. It is used as an antimicrobial. It is also used in certain foods that you ingest, yeah, that you ingest, as well as, for the most part, and this is where I come in, medications. So if I am to pop my Wolverton book, propylene glycol is a vehicle ingredient commonly used in the pharmaceutical world by pharmaceutical companies to help enhance the percutaneous penetration of various topical medications, particularly antifungal agents. It helps to make things work better for your skin. It's never once proven to be dangerous to your overall health and well-being. It can definitely be an irritant. And if you are somebody with very sensitive skin, it can be irritating. If that is what she is referring to, being quote unquote an antifreeze, she is not educated. Ethylene glycol is the antifreeze that is never used in skincare. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. The other thing about propylene glycol is that glycerin, my personal favorite that a lot of clean brands use, actually has the same exact chemical structure as propylene glycol plus an additional alcohol group. Okay? So I apologize for getting a little pissy this Saturday morning, but this threw me over the edge after the sunscreen. That was um, quite a video. Um, listen, to each their own, all I'm going to say is sunscreen is not your enemy. Whether it is a physical or a chemical sunscreen, it is not your enemy. When using a sunscreen, a third to half a teaspoon to cover your face, neck, and ears, and you'll have a little extra for the back of your hands. Antifreeze is not something found in skincare products. Ethylene glycol is the real antifreeze used in vehicles. And learn how to layer your skincare products. I hope this has showed you guys that there's a difference. Rule of thumb, when layering skincare products, start from least thick, lightest to heaviest. And jumping around like this is only going to create certain like you know, off balance of the products where some products can no longer penetrate as well because of the occlusivity of the product applied beneath it. So yeah. And lastly, clean, non-toxic doesn't actually mean anything. It is unfortunately something that has been perpetuated by the beauty industry. It is a billion dollar industry. Um, it is not backed by science. It is not backed with data. And don't get lured into claims that are based off of scaring you. Use your mind, use your eyes, do your reading, understand the science, understand the data, and then formulate your opinion and move forward. Don't just, you know, take it for what it's worth, especially if it is leading through fear. On that note, I am Dr. Shireen Idris. I hope this has been eye-opening and I hope you guys have now a better understanding as to why a lot of dermatologists and estheticians and skincare experts out there this week were revolting. All right, have a great Saturday.